welcome to Conquering Mount Scrapmore with Brenda. I'm Brenda and today we're here with Double Economy Blocks. Now the pattern is going to be in the show notes below and there's two pages because I have given you five sizes of Double Economy Blocks to work with. And I haven't quite figured out yet which one we're going to work with today but we are working out of our crumb bin so this is a great little scrap buster for you to play with. But before we start any sewing we always have to introduce somebody to you that's another fellow YouTuber or has somebody online is Irina from Sugar Redo. Now her channel is, uh, I believe she's out of the Netherlands and her stuff is just wonderful, fresh, modern, you know, it's just, it's gorgeous. And she is such a charming person. So when you go over there and check her out and you subscribe, tell her that Brenda from Conquering Mount Scrapmore sent you. Also share, like, and subscribe our videos too, because some of you that are watching, over half of you that are watching are not subscribed. And that would really help us out if you did subscribe. So. It would help us out with our computer analytics. I am not a computer person. This is the machine I use. I have no idea about computers, but it's a, a vert, it's a thing with YouTube. You have more subscribers, your channel gets put out there more often. So that's kind of thing. We also have a Facebook group and we're having lots of fun in there sewing and uh, you know, the virtual sew, sewing rooms are well, are being well used. And last night we were laughing so hard. I was just about in tears. So. But, you know, and we also are sharing pictures and there's some very talented people there that are posting stuff up as well. So, if you get the chance, go there and join up. Now, come on in. We've got some foundation paper piecing to do for double economy blocks. Okay, here's your double economy blocks and you have two of them. Like, there's two pages because you have five sizes, right? So I'm going to do them, but not all, but I'm not going to do them all right now because now I decided I was going to go with a five inch. So I'm just going to cut this out real quick with my paper scissors or paper. See paper, they're labeled paper and everything. So they're easy to find in my sewing room and I'm just going to put that to the side. Now I'm playing with my crumbs, but because... I've got a bunch of yellow crumbs here. I might as well put throw some yellow in here. Now I've already done my tracing wheel marking on the back and you can see and feel that. I know, yeah. Now I made a little mistake here, but I'll be mindful of that one, you know, when I when I come to that piece, right? So let's find a piece of blue that will work first. I'm in a massive blue basket here. I just don't even know where to start in here some days. This is a lot of blue stuff in here. Oh, okay, that's too small. That oh, this is cute. Let's do this. That's gonna be big enough too. Okay. So let's cut. No, I'm just gonna cut stuff out that's big enough, right? Now some people put glue here just to get it started. Right now, I didn't need a piece that big. So I'm going to do two first, and I'm just gonna bend two out of the way. Now, I could, if I want this all to be on grain, I mean, this is the piece, but I mean, this is all crumbs, right? I mean, this is all stuff that basically people are gonna throw out, so. Because I just wanted to get it started. I'm just going to go do this and then I'm going to pick one of my yellows, right? And I'm going to line it up so I have good coverage right there. And then <laughs> flip it over because I need some, 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 uh, stitching to hold this in place, right? Well, let's get this out of the way. Okay. All right. So two it is. And we're just going to, now I can peek under here because I haven't pinned and everything's lined up. I'm um, good. There we go. There. Now. So there's two. And I have really good coverage on two. So let's pop over to three. Now three is where I cut, I made it line twice. So I want to make sure I'm folding the right line because that's very important right now. Okay. Now, 
is this going to cover? Yes, it will. So I'm going to use that one there. And I'm just going to hold it in place. And make sure everything goes according to plan. Yes, it is. It's all there. Now, when you're doing dumb economy blocks, Sometimes it's easier to do a bunch at once, right? You know, because so, you have all your stuff and you're going to do like a whole whack of, you know, let's say piece number one, right? It's actually easier to do this with more than one piece. So now two and three are already done. So I'm going to just trim four and five right away. Okay, I'm going to just pull that back just a bit gently pull it back don't be ripping off the entire because it's only it's only being held together on there by you know a couple of pieces of stitching right this is why some people use uh, foundation paper piecing they use glue like elmer school glue because it doesn't take much for it to come off of paper you know so and it's up to you that's that's another added cost i mean when you're doing this sometimes you want to do this as cheaply and as economically as possible so we're going to do three you know four first sorry not, not three so we're going to get something bright okay now you want to make sure you're at least covering a quarter inch on either side right that's another important thing that we and so we Basically, foundation paper piecing is, can you sew a straight line? Yes. If you can sew a straight line, you're good. You're good to go. Okay. Let's get the other side now done and lined up. There. These uh, foundation paper piecing when you're doing little pineapples, too, is really nice. It's really nice to have that. That. Oops. Okay, make sure that's all under. Okay, here we go. Make sure that's still in the right spot. Yes, it is. Okay. Yeah. It's all good. So now, you have a choice. You can either go whites or blues right because now you're going to be trimming this block for the next round so i'm going to choose whites because i just want the yellow there as a pop accent just to just to you know get it all popped out so i start with six seven eight nine right so six starts here and i'm going to trim all the way around because it's faster when you get to the sewing right and it doesn't matter in which order you trim them because they're all pretty much the same and everybody's got a different way of liking to do this economy block some people they just prefer to do winging it you know they just sew it around and square it up at the end and if that's what you like to do that's okay you know that that work if it's working for you that's great some people prefer a little bit more accuracy or they want to do tinier piecing or they, you know, there's all sorts of reasons why you would do this with foundation paper piecing. Okay, so let's start. Let's start with six and we're going to go into our whites. So our whites, now you just want to measure just to make sure you've got good coverage, right? So this might be a little on the thin side, so... Well, yeah, all of this might be a little on the thin side. Let's go bigger. Ooh, I've got four big pieces of this. Do I? I have two. That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. And we just keep digging down a little. Oh, ooh, ooh. We've got some whites. We've got some white on whites. That'll be perfect. Okay. So, I have white on whites that are huge and that are big. So, I'm just going to cut pour them down the center and I will be good to, for all the white on white so I'm going to be using there and yes they're oversized but they're also crumbs so 
in my sewing room. They're they're crumb. They they are prepared to die. They are prepared to die. They come in here and they die. <laughs> so it's all good. So let's just get six. Okay. I'm gonna sew your straight line, and as long as your straight line is, you're gonna cross over. I'll show you that in a sec. Hang on. You're going to cross over a line prior that you made prior, right? So you get a perfect little point going. And I'm going to show you on this side. There is your point, right? That's the point you got to make. So, and it will make it every time. Every time without fail. So let's get to the other side. Okay. Oh my, what have I done here? Oh, let's get that there. Okay. And there. Nice. Go. And now you got two sides done. And we're just going to go, I'm not sure which is, eight, eight is on this side. So you want to make sure you get the right side up. And this sometimes is a little hard. This is a little sharper side, especially with your white on white. Sometimes it's a little harder to see which one is the right side and which one is not the right side. But it's all good. Mm -hmm. And we're going to make that beautiful point again. Yes, we do. Okay. Okay, there we go. Flip it over. Get this. Push this out of the way. Check our point is perfect. Perfect, perfect. And this is, okay, which side is the right side? Okay, that side. Okay. There. And now, there we do. There we go. This will finish at five inches inside the quilt block or the quilt. So that's a nice size block. It's not too small, it's not too weird. Yes, we have fun with all sorts of different sizes of blocks. And we're getting ready for an orphan quilt challenge. Orphan block challenge. So here we go. So that now, there's our first ring around. Now we're going to go back and we're going to just trim off all of the outside edge and get ready to put the last round of blue on. So I think that would... There we go. That gets tossed. And because these are symmetrical, like they're even, oh, let's make sure we get 10 right on the line that we put. Because these are symmetrical blocks, it really doesn't matter which one you put on first as you're doing your rounds, right? If you prefer to do, or which ones you prefer to, uh, what is this one? Not behaving. There it is. Okay. So it doesn't really matter which one you do first or last. There. So now. Uh, and last but not least. There. Now we gotta find some fun purple or fun blue. So the white is all the same white, but the blue doesn't have to be all the same blue. It should kind of be in the same, you know, this is what I'm, where I'm thinking it might be good if it's all in the same area. Now, what I can do is I can play with bubbles. And I'm going to play with bubbles. Not only am I going to pay, play with bubbles, I'm going to make all the bubbles. Ah, oh, here go just like this. I'm going to go straight up the middle. I'm going to cut it so it's straight up the middle. There we go. Now I've got four pieces, four triangles, right? And I'm just going to start with, I believe 10 is the, the number we're looking for. So 10 is on this side. Okay, so you just want to kind of line it up 
to the middle. And because this is a triangle, it's going to be oversized block, right? I mean, I've put this in and it's a big piece. There we go. And we just go to the other side and I can start running through little bits of, yeah, little bits of yellow again. If I didn't end up in the block. Wow, do I have a pile of yellow? And it's harvesting crumbs. So I just push this out of the way. Just like that. And get to the other side. Just like that. Put it down. Lay it down. Get it under. There we go. Yeah, these are. I'm doing little crumb walks in between. Perfect leader and ender for me. As we're, I'm harvesting my crumb blocks for. Uh, let's see, twelve is on top. I'm for hexy flowers because I'm gonna make hex bunch of hexy flowers. Now, if you've got a good triangle, this also tells you that you're in the middle, right? That you've got middle. But this is oversized. You don't really have to worry about that too much. Okay. And another, another one through. Okay. Oh. Yeah, I love foundation paper pieces. Really nice. So that's coming together actually really well okay there last one just going to run around and get our stay stitching right just to make sure that everything's stabilized like this I could probably get away with not because it's I the way this is like straight a grain around but just to be sure just to be sure I always do this and I stay stitch within the seam line the seam line there we go and we turn Cut off a little bit. And this is such a great way to keep a nice neat edge when you're pulling off your paper. And I stay stitch with a tight, like anywhere from 30 or 25 to 30 stitches an inch. So I don't know what that is on a modern machine, but it kind of it just works. It works well for me. So that's all I'm going to say about that. It just works. It works for me. <laughs> I'm, and I'm happy. So, okay. Let's get another one under. No. Okay. And we're going to trim this up. I should probably get a bigger ruler for trimming because this, this one is too small. Your, your fingers are way too close to the rotary cutter blade. So, I just want to make sure it's on the line. Nice. Okay. There we go. Okay, there we go. Okay. And last one. And I'm checking to make sure I've got a square. You know, a good square. Okay. And now we have our ta-da moment. So this is our cute little double economy quilt block that yeah I have. Now this is the five and a half inch size, so it finishes at five inches in the quilt. Um, <laughs> there's other sizes that are also in the show notes below in the pattern and the PDFs. So I hope you have fun with this. I, you saw me pull this out of my crumb bin, right? I mean, 
this comes together really quickly. Now, because I've shortened my stitch length, which you need to do when you're doing FPP, this paper comes out really quickly. It just, you know, it doesn't take much to pull it apart or pull it out. And with the tracing wheel trick, it's already pre-perforated, so it comes out even easier. So, I hope you do try these. These are so much fun. They're so cute. I just love these. And I like the smaller the better, because then they're just, they're just fun. Anyways, until we meet again, you take care. And I hope life treats you really gently and every, everybody's happy. Okay? Bye! My husband and I would love to thank you for coming along with us on our quilting journey and the YouTube adventure that we're on. We have some wonderful plans for 2023 and it includes a lot more like with the Facebook group and the rooms feature and sewing and hanging out with people. Those monthly Zoom sew dates are still in the works. We have a lot of fun ideas coming up for 2023 and we hope you share, like and subscribe with your friends. That little notification bu button and subscribing to us really helps us out. Commenting helps us out too. So if you like what you're seeing, let us know. Even send us a like a, a heart on the comment. That, that helps so much for us. Okay, you have an absolutely fabulous 2023 and all of our best wishes for you in the future. Okay, take care. Bye.